Shalom, Kohlo, Yahweh, Bashem, Abashai, Bashem, Rakak, Badash. Double honors unto the apostles and the elders. Salutations to all my fellow laborers. Doing this work in truth and sincerity. Continuing on with part one. So we'll call this uh, part one, uh, section B. Or this will be part one B. So now it's going to have to be A and B. Because they cut the camera off because it was just getting too hot for them. Um, and I'm doing this one in anger because this angers me. All right, so we're going to go right here in this video. We just proved that uh, it's seven candlesticks and not eight. And that the Israelites was a dark uh, complexion, dark-skinned people with woolly hair, not pale pale flesh with, with straight hair. All right, so we're going to go to the 144, uh, or the minute and 44 second, 144, and, uh, and let it play from there. antiquity, the independent kingdoms of Israel and Judah were in terminal decline. As a result, the history of the Jewish people soon came to be defined by the carousel of foreign empires that took turns conquering and subsequently ruling the ancestral Hebrew homeland. First came the Assyrians, then the Babylonians, then the Persians, who ruled the Jews with a reasonably fair and light hand. Finally, in 332 BC, the Macedonian phalanxes of Alexander would steamroll the Achaemenid Empire out of existence, establishing classical Greek as the dominant language and culture of the Near East. It is here that the Jewish people became subjects of the Greek world. When Alexander died, his massive Macedonian Empire fractured into several monarchies, ruled by his closest comrades and later their descendants. The so-called Diadochi kingdoms were constantly at war with one another, and the region of Judea, being situated in the borderland between the Ptolemies of Egypt and Seleucids of Syria, became a battleground where the two Macedonian dynasties jockeyed for power and influence. Despite this, life remained fairly peaceful for the Hebrews. The Hellenistic kings generally used the same light touch the Persians had, interfering very little in the region's culture, religion, and internal politics. The Jewish people were ruled semi-autonomously by a high priest of the Judaic faith, who handled matters both religious and secular from the great temple of Jerusalem. So we'll stop right there, all right? So he said a lot. So we're gonna, once again, you see that, that false uh, image of the menorah there. Let's take it back, uh, being, being, uh, um, being eight and not seven. In 198 right, on. BC, generally used far. the same light touch the Persians had, I just want to interfering it very little in the region's culture, religion, and internal politics. So we'll just leave that lie on the screen, all right? Um, because we clearly read in the Bible where seven candlesticks, and it was for the seven churches, uh, um, and not and not eight or nine, because they actually. Um, in modern day, they they the the one in the middle is lit up as well. They have nine, all right. So, uh, but let's go back to uh, oh Jeremiah fourteen and and two. Once again, we're going to talk about the physical appearance of the Israelites of of the Judites of the Judah Benjamin and Levi, which made up the kingdom of Judah. And we're going to use my two favorite scriptures to do it. This is Jeremiah fourteen and two, and it reads. Judah mourneth in the gates thereof language. They are black unto the ground. The cry of Jerusalem is gone up because the book of Jeremiah and the book of Lamentation, which we're going to read a scripture from both, are both books of the Lamentation and the, the captivity and, 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 and Judah and, and uh, Israel being under subjugation. All right. And, and when we read verse two, it said in Jeremiah, I'll read it again. Judah mourneth at the gates thereof and the gates thereof language. They had no leadership. They, and it's not talking about the gates. They are black unto the ground. The day are Israel is talking about their skin color because this, when you look this up in the Hebrew, it says Kadar. Kadar. Kadar means black skin or dark or dark skinned. They were not pale. So we got scriptures call, calling their skin copper, brass, dark, and then we got uh, uh, skin. I mean uh, scriptures. Referring to their 
to their hair is woolly and their skin is dark. As a matter of fact, when you read in Daniel's the seventh chapter about the Most High himself and the sun, it's, it talks about their woolly hair and their skin like the burnished brass, like the polished brass. Brown. These people are liars, complete and total liars. Let's go to the book of Lamentation now. All right. This is Lamentation 4 and 8. And I love this one. This is probably my favorite because it's telling you their visage. It's telling you when you look at them, this is what they look like. Their visage is blacker than a coal. They were really dark, complected for the most part. They are not known in the streets, matching today, because no one knows because they're called black, you know, and everything. They're called Jamaican. They're called, uh, 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 um, they're called Haitian, you know, a, a Montserratian. They're called an American, a Negro, uh, an African American, you know. I wonder what they call them in London. An African Londonite? Well, I mean, what I don't have no idea what they call them over there. But we're full of bywords. That's another clue. It said that that will be upon you for, for a curse and for a mark. All right. It says, uh, their visage is blacker than the coal. They are not known in the streets. Their skin cleaveth to their bones and is withered because of, and become like a stick. They were starving. All right. This was a lamentation of, of the Israelites. Now he also spoke about how um, the language became uh, Greek. And what this telling you is that... Um, as a matter of fact, let's go back to uh to the Maccabees, first Maccabees again. Um, we read about Alexander, and what we didn't mention about Alexander in first Maccabees, that he became the first uh in his stead to rule over the dark skinned Grecians, over the brown skinned Grecians. He was the first in his stead in his race, the first Edomite. And you can trace uh Alexander and his father Philip back to Esau Edom in the Bible. They were Edomites. Hence, once another reason why the Bible Destruction Group and modern-day Christianity don't like to bring this out, because the, the, you, if to say that the, uh, the Apocrypha is not real, the, the most accurate history ever written about what we're reading, what, he, what this documentary about is found in the Apocrypha, all right? And it matches up, and the precepts in the Apocrypha match up to the, to the rest of the Bible, and vice versa. So it's, it's foolishness to try and pretend that it isn't, but it said how... They uh let's jump up to uh verse seven, first Maccabees one and seven. I'm gonna start at verse six. Verse five. And after these things he fell sick and perceived that he should die, wherefore he called his servants, such as were honorable, and had been brought up with him from his youth, and part of his king among them while he was yet alive. So it was talking about Seleucius and Ptolemy and the rest of his guys, Cassander, his generals, they were all Edomites. So Alexander reigned 12 years and then died and his service bear rule everyone in his place. And after his death, they all put on crowns. They've all put crowns upon themselves so that their sons after them in many years, evils were multiplied in the earth. And out of them came a wicked root, Antiochus, surnamed Epiphanes, son of Antiochus, the king who had been hostage in Rome and he reigned in the hundred and and. And 30 and 7th year in the kingdom of the Greeks. So evils multiply in the earth when these Edomites begin to rule and begin to lay and they labeled themselves as royals. All right. Esau made himself royalty when he wasn't. That's why they reverence Alexander of Macedon, the Edomite, so greatly because through him, the white race came into power the first time in the history of mankind. All right. All these great uh, kingdoms that had been built before them by brown people, they were now sitting up on the top of them all. And it talks about, you know, in, in the book of Revelation, the, the dragon that was wounded, but did live. See, Rome was destroyed by, by Israel, by so-called Negroes, and it went down and it, then it went into the dark ages. And, and, the, and the dark people were ruling all over Europe. And, and then in the late 1300s, the Edomites started coming out of the caves, coming back, sneaking their way back into power. By the 15th century, end of the 14th century, Esau came back into power, and that became the rebirth, the renaissance, the rebirth of the so-called white man, the rebirth of the dragon. And now we're at that last, that little season that Satan was loose, the human adversary, and now we're at the end of that kingdom. That's why there's so much chaos in the world and the things that are happening. All right, but let's go to uh, 1 Maccabees. We're already there. Let's shoot up to verse 42. 
and it reads, and I'm going to read to 50. And it reads, and everyone should, well, I'm going to start at 41. More of a king, Antios has wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people and everyone should leave his laws. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king. Yet many of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. So these Israelites became strangers. All right. And, when, and guess what? That continued on for generate for 400 years. Proof to that is in, in before the, and this is before, this is the, the space in between the Old and the New Testament. This 400 year period of Hellenization of following the so-called white man. That was the, that's why I said there's no difference between the Greek and the Jew, but yet it was referring to Hebrew matters. Duh. All right. Because those Greeks that was, that were being spoken of, to by the apostles and by Paul, all right, were still Israelites. That's why he said that. It wasn't some great universalism that, you know, the Lord is dealing with his people and now and now all of a sudden everybody else can have mercy. The the, the who the world ignorant calls Jesus Christ came, he he came into the flesh, and the word became flesh, and he died and sacrificed himself to bring on repentance unto Israel, not to all people. All right. Um Verse uh, 43, back in 1 Maccabees 1 and 43. Yeah, many also of the Israelites consented to his religion and sacrificed unto idols and profaned the Sabbath. For the king has sent letters by messengers unto Jerusalem and the cities of Judea that they should follow the strange laws of the land and forbid burnt offerings, sacrifice, and drink offerings in the temple that they should profane the Sabbath and festival days and pollute the sanctuary and holy people set up altars and groves and chapels and idols and sacrifice swine flesh and unclean beast that they should also leave their children uncircumcised and make their souls abominable with all matter of uncleanliness and profanation to the end that they might forget the law and change all the ordinances. So they did, because guess what? When you don't teach your children the law and then you grow old and die, and your children never taught their children the law and you're not circumcising them. You're giving them, they're letting them get tattoos they're eating abominable foods during a matter of the heat uh, a matter of the heathen. What do you think happens uh to your to your descendants three, four generations from there? All right, verse 50. And who would and and whosoever would not do according to the commandment of the king, he said he should die. All right, let me read verse 51. And in the self-same manner wrote he to his whole kingdom and appointed overseers over all the people, commanding the cities of Judea to sacrifice the city by city. So he set up overseers, you know, over the Israelites to be in tune to make sure that they were not uh, keeping their feast days, that they were not keeping the law. It is even, as we're going to get into it, they even burned, burned up our holy books, our Bibles and everything and tried, and they cut us off from being a people. That's what they were trying to do. All right. And then the Lord came to preserve the message. So this has been part, part one, A and B. And um, I look forward to continuing this. And like I said, I'm going to let like, you know, four or five minutes play until we're done with it and then destroy uh, these Edomite, these whitewashed lies uh, with the truth and with scripture. Call Halal Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, Shem Rakakwadash, Wa Ababa Ba, Kwam Yashara